following thought experiment was developed to allow a person to analyze and determine if they truly believe in God. To be clear, this in no way is meant to disprove the existence of God. Most individuals, regardless of religious affiliation, should find the exercise somewhat fun and enlightening. However, in some cases, this newly found realization can be quite discomforting. So I urge you, please pause the video and ask yourself how would you react if you were to discover that in fact you do not believe in God. If this understanding will cause you great mental anguish, I suggest that you stop the video at this time and perhaps readdress this argument at a later date when you're better prepared for that possibility. I thank you. Since you're still here, I assume you're willing to ask yourself some tough questions and are prepared to confront the answers, whatever they may be. I would like to thank you in advance for your time and honest participation. Keep in mind, the following questions are not rhetorical. You should answer every question, and if necessary, pause the video to give each issue as much attention as you feel is required. Also, please do your best to immerse yourself in the exercise. The more real world you make the thought experiment, the more reflective of your true beliefs the outcome will be. Okay, let's get started. I have found it best if you are the one to define your beliefs and your God. Remember, this is about you. The more honest you are, the better the results. Therefore, the terms should reflect your beliefs, not a set of values that are dictated by your church. Unless, of course, those descriptions are what you truly believe. Question 1. Do you believe, in most cases, a person's recurring actions reflect their beliefs? An example of this may include the fact that people are reluctant to touch a stovetop burner that appears red. This is because, over time, they have learned the color red, at least in this context, indicates the burner is hot and potentially harmful. Interestingly, most people will hesitate to touch a burner that is red even after they have been informed that the burner is not hot and the red coloration is due to it being painted or because of false lighting. This is because of the fact actions resulting from one's ingrained beliefs are difficult to overcome. Question 2. Is God omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, and or omnibenevolent? In layman's terms, what I'm asking is, is God all-knowing, all-seeing, all-loving, and all-powerful? Question three, do you believe God is the most significant, sentient being in your life? To clarify, would you agree that even though you may truly love other human beings, you should put God before all others? Question four, do you believe the most important relationship of your life is the one you cultivate with God? Again, do you feel it's true that although you may want and even feel you need relationships while here on earth, your relationship with God is paramount to your overall well-being? Now that you have reacquainted and perhaps reestablished your foundation of basic beliefs and the characteristics of God, we can begin the thought experiment. Begin by envisioning a living person who you currently have a good relationship with. Most importantly, you wish to continue and or improve that bond by maintaining and developing their perception of you as both moral and ethical. Now this person need not be an authority figure. Examples might include a spouse, parents, friends, or even a child. The important aspect of this individual is they consider you to be a good person and you wish to maintain that status. Now I'd like you to picture yourself performing an act, better yet, let's make that a sin, that you have done in the past, and that if found out, could jeopardize how this individual views you. Now the act does not have to be an evil act, just a sin that if discovered could negatively impact your image. Something like lying, stealing, or even something as benign as masturbating will do just fine. You got it? Okay, let's move on. Now I'm going to turn up the heat on you a little. Imagine that individual becomes aware of what you're doing. 
Would you stop what you're doing? Or would you continue the act? To be clear, you are aware that they're witnessing the sin. And they realize what you're doing. Would you stop? Now let's back up a step. Imagine that this person was aware of what you were planning to do before you actually did it. Now remember, you have not begun the act, but as before, they have full understanding of what you are about to do. Would or even could you begin to perform the act with them present and aware of what was about to happen? In other words, would slash could you start to masturbate, lie, or steal in front of that person that you love and desire the respect from? Okay, buckle up. This is where things get interesting. Given the attributes and the import you conferred to your God, I would like you to explain why you are willing and able to perform these sins with your God present, while at the same time you're unwilling and even perhaps unable to commit the same sin in the presence of a human being. While that sinks in and you contemplate your answers, let me save us both some time by addressing the most frequent responses. The answer I get most often is that I can sin because God will forgive me. This response totally misses the point of the exercise. I'm quite sure the person you have in mind may forgive you as well. This does not change the fact that you will not commit that sin when they are aware of what you're doing. Again, the point of the exercise is to highlight the discontinuity between what you say you believe and how you act on a daily basis. The next most common assertion is that we're not perfect and we all commit sinful acts. I must disagree, at least in part. Now let me explain. I assume you have not continued and or started an act that was unethical or shameful in front of a loved one that was aware of what you were doing. Now to put it bluntly, have you masturbated in front of your parents and then went on to claim, well, no one's perfect, we all sin? Of course you haven't. In short, what this demonstrates, that you are perfect, at least regarding that act in front of human beings. You're just not perfect in front of God. In closing, I realize this argument takes time for most people to comprehend, and it can be difficult to admit that your own actions will not only lead others to conclude that you do not believe in God, but it may in fact force you to reassess your faith as well. I hope this was at least interesting and welcome your comments below. Please rate and favorite as you see fit. Also, I, along with Live Life 8072, hold a weekly blog TV show called The Skeptic Fence. I would like to invite you to stop by and view what we do. We welcome people of all faiths and encourage everyone to call in during the question and answer portion of the show. We broadcast every Saturday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern. Links in the description bar. We hope to see you there, and thanks again for watching.